I'm about to show you some of the most cunning fishing equipment available anywhere. Uh, if you've never been impressed by primitive fishing equipment, you will be when you're done watching this video. One of the most important materials to use for making primitive fish hooks is the grapevine claspers off of the wild grapevines. And as you can see, they, they twist up into little curly cues and uh, they hold on to the thorns perfectly and it's one of the most convenient things to use for making fish hooks because uh, when you use this material you don't have to tie. As far as thorns go, I like using thorns off of the thorn apple tree. See, those work really good. Now, a lot of survivalists out there would recommend that you use rose bushes to make your fish hooks out of. Like the stems off these roses here. But the problem with that is, is these aren't stuck onto the stem very well. They just break right off. And if you go through all the trouble of splitting these stems and lashing them back together so you got a treble hook to make a fish hook out of, the fish will bite it. And then thorns will just snap right off. So that's not really a good material to use. Okay. Take your thorn. Take your grapevine clasper. See, you got a hole right there. Just pass the thorn through it. And push it in until it shoves in there tight. As you can see. That makes a good hook. And that's something you can depend on. It won't break apart, it won't fall apart, it'll get the job done. Now that's the fastest, simplest way to make a hook. Right here are two wasp lures that I have. This one right here has front legs on it that are intended to hold a caterpillar or some other kind of bait. And this one here is just a standard wasp. And then to make it even more natural, you can take a caterpillar, like I've got here, and because this fishing lure has two front legs to hold on to stuff, you can make it grasp onto a caterpillar like that and it makes it look like a wasp carrying a caterpillar and it's completely natural and believe me boy when this hits the water then fish are going to tear it up so and again this is one of the most cunning most brilliant methods you can you can employ to to do your fishing and if you um, very carefully put your lures together and plan on how you're going to fish with it, uh, your results can be amazing. These lures are made by simply using a grapevine clasper, a feather, and a thorn. Now the next lure I'd like to show you how to make is a grasshopper. Made from just a piece of grass and a wood burl. See, it's got nice legs on it. And when you put this together, it looks just like a grasshopper. The materials you need for this lure is of course your, your piece of grass that has the grasshopper legs on it. A great flying clasper and two thorns. And for this particular case I'm going to use these two cactus thorns.
first thing you do is thread your grapevine clasper onto the hand twisted line. The next thing is there's two little tiny roots right there at the very tip of it of your, your grasshopper. And what you do is you open up your line you pass those two little roots through the loop like so so they stick out like that then what you do is very carefully thread those two little roots through the hole in your grapevine clasper and the next thing you do is very carefully thread your, your grapevine clasper onto the head of the grasshopper and if you spin it it'll open up a little bit and it'll, uh, it'll increase in diameter and it'll go on there nice and tight. Okay, see? There's my root right there. Now that little root is important. And what you got to do is you got to pass it through one of the loops in the line. You just open it up and with a fit or a punch or something like that you press it right through the line and that positively locks the grasshopper onto the rope and it won't come off it'll hold it on there nice and tight then you take a punch and turning the grasshopper upside down you punch a hole through the root yeah you just punch a hole right through it until it comes up through the top you you pass your needle through that through that hole and that's what makes the hook right there and I always use I always use two thorns or two cactus needles and you make them stand together like that they have a lot better strength Just pass them both through the same hole. See? Like that right there. And that gives you a lure that looks just like a grasshopper. Now you can take the take these little bronze of grass in the back and bend those over to make it look like the grasshopper's back legs. And they will, they'll bend down, they'll look just like legs. And that positively locks all of it together and gives you an excellent lure. And if these roots right here are a little bit too long, you can just cut those off and uh, make them the appropriate length. Cut them off or snap them off. See, they'll just snap right off. Just grab it, both hands pinch, snap. See, and that gives you a grasshopper with legs. And believe me, this is a good lure right here. The fish doesn't know it's the fish don't know that it's not a grasshopper. And as you can see. 
lure like this uh, it'll work really good and because it's made out of all natural materials um, uh, the fish will accept it in the water they don't think it's strange and because it really looks like a grasshopper uh, they're going to be more more apt to bite at it than an artificial bait or just a, a regular hook with a, a piece of bread on it or something like that. Uh, the closer you can come to mimicking life when you're hunting or fishing, uh, the better chances you have of, of catching your prey. And you can have sinkers any size you want by using the vine claspers. See, they'll grab right onto the heavier stones. And you can have sinkers any any weight you want. And also you can make bobbers using the vine claspers and this uh, this particular bobber here is made from uh, the horse weed bush. It's a little tiny weed that grows on the ground. The wasp will sting it and it'll, it'll grow this gump on it right here. And these are very buoyant bobbers and you can, you can take a, a grapevine clasper and spiral it right around there and attach it to your line right here and uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute see to attach one of these type of sinkers to the line you slide the line in there like that and you take a, a bead see which is another loop from a grapevine clasper Slide it down over it like that so it helps line the line it all everything up, hold it all together. See, I got just a conventional fish hook here made from a small bead from a grapevine clasper, a cactus thorn, and the rib bone from a possum. And it's just passed back and forth through the through the loops of the line and when you do that it'll attach on there very securely and it won't come undone you have enough of a shank there to do that see and you got your bobber or your uh, your sinker rather and then the bobber see wherever you want to attach it at you do the same thing works just like the keychain on a K-ring. You just spin it on there. Just like that until it makes a half loop. And it locks it in place. The bobber won't move. See? Attach to your line. You got your sinker and your hook. And you're ready to go fishing. See, there's the bobber, sinker, and the hook. Of course, you can adjust the depth of your uh, your bobber wherever you want it. Yeah, you can use as long a fishing line as you need. And this equipment is, yeah, very primitive, very neat, and it also works very well. Now, the next type of hook I'd like to show you is made from a wood burl, right where the right where the swirl is. And what you do is you make a bead out of it, and you poke a small hole in it, 
and you slide it over your branch tip or your vine or your rope or whatever you're using. And if you're using a vine, you slide it up to a leaf site or where there's a little bit of a fat spot. And the next thing you do is you slide a thorn in one direction. And then you slide a thorn in there going the opposite direction. And you take your vine. Take your vine and you snap it off or cut it below that point. See, and that gives you a good fish hook that won't uh, it won't slide off, it won't come apart. And you have to make sure you wedge it really tight. It can't be loose on there. It has to be really tight. And that's a convenient way to make a toggle hook out of a wood burl. Okay, now I'm going to take this wasp lure right here. And you see I got a nice little curly cue on the end. And I've got a hand, hand twisted line, well it's a root, that I twisted up into a rope. And I'm going to show you how to attach this to your, to your line. What you got to do is open it up a little bit. Pass it through. And you spin it on there. Spin it. And then you pass it through another loop, just like that. You see, that'll hold that line perfectly tight. And the fish hook won't come off. So you can cast it out as much as you want and it'll hold on there and if you catch a fish, it'll hold tight because it's, it's twisted through the braids and the rope. And there's no way it can ever come off of there. See? So that's one of the most intelligent ways you can use a, a grapevine clasper to a, a, attach to a line without having to tie any knots. And yeah, it's clever, it's cunning, and it's the most perfect thing. Now that I've taught you a little bit about making fish hooks and, and lures, I'd like to show you my tackle box and my, uh, my hand line. Let me just unwrap this. Yeah, this hand fishing line right here is 30 feet in length. And you can use it like a fly fishing rod or you can attach it to a pole if you wanted to. See? got a good handle right there and it's about the diameter of a pencil until you get to the end of it and uh, it slowly tapers to a very slender line when you get to the end and of course this tip has a closed loop right there uh, intended for you to uh, hook your fish hooks to and when I say it's a tapered line you see the the difference in diameter from the end of it to where the handle is see it's a 
significant difference in size. Now my tackle box is just a piece of bamboo, a river cane, that I was split in half. You see I got a smaller piece of bamboo that has a cork in it and I keep my uh, my cactus thorns and small parts for making more fish hooks. And in the center section I keep my, my fish hooks. See like this conventional hook right here. And my wasp lures. And I have another section here where I keep my anchors and other stuff that I might need, like well, if I need to lash something, I keep a little lashing material there. That makes a convenient method of having a tackle box. Now I'm going to show you once again how to uh, set this up. Uh, take your sinker. Well, first thing I do is I'll put a wedge on there, a, a bead. And I'll run it on there. Then I'll pass this over my line. And when I get to the depth where I want to lock my sinker off at, what I'll do is I'll spin that bead onto it. You see? That effectively holds it in place or it won't move, won't slip. And see, for the fish hook, I have another small bead. Break those off, cut them. Yeah, be careful not to drop them. I'll slide that over my fishing line. Then I'll take my hook. And I'll open up that closed loop at the end. slide my hook on there and you weave the hook back and forth through the loops open up another loop and you skip one open up a loop slide it on there And that'll lock your hook onto the line. Now that'll hold it securely. And if you're afraid that maybe it won't, you can spin one uh, one of your beads down over top of the hook. Yeah, all you gotta do is twist it. It'll open up. And it'll lock it on there just like that. See? You got a little bead, crisscross it on there. And now this this fishing line is ready to use. And I mentioned it before in some of my other videos. Um, if you have beads, like this glass bead right here. Uh, you can use the yellow glass beads to trout fish with because 
trout uh, are attracted to the color yellow. They they love biting on corn. So if you have a yellow bead that you can use to build your fish hooks with, uh, you don't have to have bait because the the bead is the bait, and it's convenient. It works great, and it's something that I would recommend to anybody. And there's several several different ways you can employ using the beads with the vine clasp for fish hooks. Yeah, see, you just attach them on there at convenient positions. Um, that just eliminates your, your need to use bait. You know, sometimes uh, bait can be a difficult thing to find, especially uh, in cold weather, winter winter conditions. Uh, just carry a couple of yellow beads with you or a necklace. I usually wear a necklace with beads on it. And when I need them, I just break the necklace apart and use the beads. So it doesn't matter if you're making wasps, grasshoppers, conventional fish hooks, toggle hooks, whatever you can put together out there in the wilderness. If you follow my suggestions, you'll have the most excellent fishing equipment available. So I think maybe you'll agree that those things are amazing and uh, uh, the primitive fishing equipment is astonishing if you put it together right. Thank you for watching my video.